Okay, so continuing on with chapter one, um, and can I just say thank you, whoever invented Bang Energy Drinks, because you're the only thing that gets me through making these lecture videos. Um, <clears throat> so last time we left off, we covered slides one through three. Um, now we're starting on slide four. So, you know, we use microbes everywhere, basically. Medicine, industry, um, it's the reason that we have drugs available like insulin, which insulin used to be harvested um, basically just from ground up pancreases, um, either from horse or from humans. And so um, not very much was able to um, get harvested from those procedures. So really only ri really rich people had access to insulin. But thankfully, because of microbes and genetic engineering, now we can mass produce it and make it available um, to pretty much everyone. You know, same with hu human growth hormone. Basically anything where you have the gene for it, you can put it in a bacteria and we can produce uh, a lot of it. Um, also, maybe some of you might be taking probiotics, um, which are, um, or, you know, prebiotics, um, things that have a lot of bacteria in them and it especially helps your, your gut health. So yeah, we use them everywhere. And then of course we wouldn't have, you know, we wouldn't have our booze, right? Our beer, wine, yogurt, bread, cheese, um, all of that results from microbes. So <clears throat> here's one word that I want you to know. I want you to know this term, okay? So when something is a pathogen, that means that it can cause disease. And yeah, those are the species that we're mostly gonna be talking about in this class. Um, but remember, it's only a very, very small percentage of all microbes, okay? So pretty much all microbes, you know, except for that 0.01%, either they're good for you or they live on you and, you know, they don't do anything bad. So you're kind of like, meh, you don't care if they live on you. So, okay, now I'm gonna talk about six distinct groups of microbes. And actually, I'm gonna add a seventh, okay, that um, I want you to be aware of. But in terms of your textbook, there are six main categories. And I'm gonna go from the ones that we're gonna cover most, which are the bacteria, and then work my way down the list. Okay, so let's cover this, the six groups and then we'll talk about them individually. So first, of course, as you might imagine, we're gonna be talking a lot about bacteria um, because uh, you know the, we have most medicines that we've developed um, are antibacterial. They cause the majority of infections. And so, yeah, we're gonna spend a long time on them and they will be the, the group that you're gonna be dealing with in lab. So bacteria are very small, they're single-celled, um, means they live by themselves, as opposed to you, for example, who are multicellular and your cells are organized into tissues and organs and organ systems. Um, because bacteria are so small, we as humans like to think, oh, you know, we're so much smarter than they are. Um, here's the thing about bacteria, you know, if they undergo a genetic mutation, because they're so small, they can evolve and mutate really rapidly. Hence the problem of antibiotic resistant bacterial strains. Okay, so why we like to think we're super smart, um, unfortunately we've overused our antibiotics and that's why we're in the problem that we are with things like MRSA, um, and other antibiotic resistant strains, which we'll talk a lot about in this class because that's one of the huge challenges that you are gonna face as a healthcare professional. And also quite frankly, just as a human being who can get bacterial infections. So we'll talk a lot about that. Okay, the second category that we'll cover, and this is the second largest category, are viruses. And remember, these are one of the, the weirdos that fit into that category where they're, they're, they can cause infection, but they're not technically alive because they can't reproduce on their own. However, as we're seeing, because we're in the midst of a global pandemic, that's why I'm you know teaching you online instead of face-to-face, um, they're not technically cells, but are they scary and can they be infectious? Absolutely. Okay, so we'll talk a lot about viruses. Um, you know, on the bright side of the pandemic, if there is one, at least it's a really good teaching moment 
for, um, you know, microbiology. I would rather it not be, but, um, you know, we'll talk about COVID-19 when we, you know, get into viruses. Okay, category three would be the protozoa. So these also like to live by themselves. They are single-celled, but they are much larger and more complex than bacteria. So maybe some of the common ones you may have heard of that, you know, people in Eastern Iowa, um, you know, it's not uncommon for them to get are Giardia. Um, most of the time when you get a protozoa infection, it's in your gut. And so it causes, you know, massive diarrhea and a lot of stomach upset. So Giardia is an example of a protozoan. Um, Cryptosporidium, um, which I know we had a big outbreak at least last summer in a bunch of lakes in Iowa, which also gives you really, really bad diarrhea. And when I say bad diarrhea, I mean to the point where the person it you know, quite easily can be hospitalized because they are so incredibly dehydrated, which can obviously affect, you know, other parts of their physiology. So it's not like, you know, diarrhea you might get if you have food poisoning and then in a day it's over. It's really, really debilitating. And countries in the world who don't have the ability to treat these protozoan infections, um, they have a pretty high death rate. You know, if they don't have clean water and they don't have ad adequate medical care, you know, here in the United States, we're lucky. You know, we can treat these infections, but a lot of places can't. And so people actually die quite commonly of these protozoa infections. So they will be the number three category we'll talk about. Okay, and then we'll talk about fungi. And, you know, we're not going to spend a lot of time on fungi. You know, obviously, if you've seen a mushroom, if you're a mushroom hunter, you know, morel mushrooms, the mushrooms you get on your pizza, those are fungi. Um, what we're going to talk about mostly are yeasts or yeast infections. Um, a lot of patients are gonna get confused and think that um, yeast are bacteria because yeah, they are pretty small. You have to look under the microscope to see them, but they are fungi, okay? So for example, an antibiotic will never work against a fungal infection because they're completely different classes of microorganisms. Okay, then we're gonna talk about um, the, well, this is the group that usually grosses out my students the most, talking about different types of parasitic worms, um, such as tapeworms. Um, pinworms are not uncommon for little kids to get in Eastern Iowa as well, so we'll talk about that. So in terms of your textbook, um, the number six group would be algae, okay? Algae are really pretty and neat and, as a person who also teaches forensic science, they can be really useful forensically. However, here's the key, they are not pathogenic. So they are not gonna cause disease. So you can drink a gallon of algae, have at it. It's not going to cause an infection in you. The reason is, and as we talked about in the last video, it's because they are photosynthetic. So they use energy from sunlight to make their own nutrition, therefore, they don't need to feed off of you, okay? So um, algae, yep, super pretty, but we're not gonna spend any time on them because they don't cause infection. Okay, so in terms of your study guide and your textbook, these are the big six. Um, I've added an extra one just because we're gonna talk about it in this class. Um, and those are little things called prions, which are even smaller than viruses. And viruses are really, really small. Um, and prions are little infectious particles that always cause um, encephalopathy. So they always infect the brain. So if you've heard of mad cow disease, obviously that affects cattle. Um, but also there's a human prion disease called Kreutzfeld Jakob, which I know we've had uh, you know, a couple of cases in Eastern Iowa. Um, it actually is a mutated form of a prion that causes chronic wasting disease in deer. And every once in a while on the news here in Iowa, you'll hear about the Department of Natural Resources tracking cases of chronic wasting disease in deer. Yep, that's a prion. And so they're tracking it because, you know, potentially if someone were to eat that infected deer meat, they could potentially get, you know, Kreutzfeldt-Jakob. And prion diseases also are 100% 
fatal. So yeah, it's pretty scary that just a little hunk of protein and something that is so small and also technically not alive like viruses can be so deadly. Yeah, it's pretty creepy. We'll get to that later in the semester. Okay, so here are your big six. And then this is an Amy category that I just added because I, I want you to, you know, have heard that word before we get to it. Okay, so microbes, yep, they're teeny tiny. And because of that, you know, we humans who like to think, oh, we're on the top of the food chain. You know, we, um, you know, we're so smart and we can handle anything. Um, really, microbes have the largest impact um, on, really, on Earth and all of our ecosystems. Okay, so um, at that point, I want to start talking about the difference between, okay, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Um, I do want to add this. So if you look back in the fossil record of the earth, um, you know, scientists have been able to discover basically organisms that look like bacteria, which is what um, bacteria are prokaryotes, about 3.5 billion years ago. So, you know, a long time ago, I mean, humans haven't been around that long. So prokaryotes, which are bacteria, showed up first. And then, not surprisingly, they became more complex. And about two billion years later, then eukaryotes showed up. The, the main difference between a eukaryotic cell and a prokaryotic cell is that eukaryotes have a nucleus, which is the compartment that houses our DNA. Okay, and we're gonna, I'm gonna discuss that later in this chapter too. So I just want you to have heard those terms. And the theory is, it actually, there's a theory called endosymbiosis, which you don't have to know for the exam or quiz. It's basically a big bacteria ate a smaller bacteria, and then for whatever reason, it didn't digest it, and that's how eukaryotes developed, okay? So we see them showing up later um, in the fossil record. One thing I wanna point out too, do not memorize numbers. I will never ask you about dates or numbers on an exam or a quiz because to me that's just a dumb statistic to you know memorize. It doesn't help you learn microbiologies. But I'm just putting it in there so you can you know know that prokaryotes showed up in the fossil record way before eukaryotes did. Okay, so I'm at 12 minutes. I'm going to get this video uploading and then we will start uh, part three talking about prokaryotes. Thank you.